So hi there, this is Morris, and we're going to be looking at another study on these one-day trades. Now, in a different video, I did a test where the market went up, our SPX went up about half a percent overnight, and we saw those results. If you didn't see the video, then go check that one out. So this one is a follow-up on the same topic, but in this case, SPX drops 1.6% overnight. So we're going to compare what happens when we use these type of strategies really short term. And I, in this one, I added in a, a unbalanced condor, which you can see right now on the screen. So we can see the difference in the risk profile and how this type of trade could prevent you from losing so much compared to these other strategies. So first, Again, let's do an analysis on these. So we're looking at an unbalanced condor. I have 100% set here, which means that my instant back tester, this is patent pending, by the way, my instant back tester is going to be comprised of every single, every back test. It's not going to filter out any of them within the last month of trading. Now, Another thing is, is um, let me show you what date that I'm on because I'm, I'm using the software in the past, just one second. So here we are at the price chart and we can see that when we look at the month that we're gonna analyze, again, we're including this data in our analysis. And we're gonna start this trade on September 20th and then we're just gonna fast forward one day to the 21st where there's a significant drop in price of the SPX of 1.6%. So again, that last test we did, SPX increased in price about half a percent and the trades did great. But this time, we're gonna see what happens when you're wrong and SPX fell 1.6%. So here we are back at the risk profiles and we're looking at a bullish unbalanced condor and then the way this trade is structured you can see that it has some limited risk on the downside but then if you overshoot this side if if spx moves over 1.3 percent overnight to the upside then you start to lose over here now what i've done is i've created various spreads and they all require about the same amount of margin with reg t about 7,000, not exactly the same, but similar. So first we have this unbalanced condor, and then I'm gonna model one day into the trades and get the average return. So again, this one's averaging over that last month of trading, $600 return or 9%. The next trade we're looking at is a credit spread and it's in the money credit spread and you can see this one is averaging 33% overnight. Then you have a long call. Here we have an in the money call and it averaged 39% overnight. And then we have an out of the money call which averaged 47% overnight and that's because one day the SPX moved up about 2% so it just hit it out of the ballpark it was somewhere around here it made over 200,000 in one day because of that huge move then you have an iron condor and it averaged 3% or 205 dollars overnight. So again, we're instantly back testing the last month of these trades and you can see how cool this is in the software because you can do it so fast where if you had to do this manually it would take you hours. So I just back tested five different trades for the whole month and I can see their average performance. So next what we're going to do is we're going to advance the calendar one day and then we're going to see what happens to all of these trades. 
So let's start over with the unbalanced condor. So here we see that, again, SPX fell 1.6.4%. And so this trade realizes that maximum loss of $1,230. The next trade experiences a loss of $7,680. This is the in the money credit spread. The next one loses 8,085. This was the in the money long call. Then your out of the money call loses 7,290. So it's interesting because you would think that they would have significantly different loss, but what happens is I, when you invest a similar amount, then you lose a similar amount on the in the money, out of the money call. So that's why this one lost so much. Then your condor also lost the full amount, $7,180. So you can see with the same investment amount that the unbalanced condor lost the least. Now, remember, the unbalanced condor would lose just as much if you have a huge move and it goes way over here. That's how you lose the maximum on this one. So what's important to think about is that you know, on your one month journey or your day to day trading like this, you're going to hit these trades where you lose the maximum. So imagine, let's say you're doing this strategy, like an in the money um, credit spread. Well, what happens if you hit five losses in a row? Now you're down like $40,000 because you're losing so many times in a row. And then you have to think, well, if I lose $40,000, you know, what's your portfolio at? Because you, if you put the same amount in all of your trades, 7000 for example. So sooner or later, you're going to hit these winners too, but you don't know how many times in a row you're going to lose. What's neat, though, is that this one, during that one month, made over 200000 one day right over here because the SPX had a day where it moved up like 2%. So that was really neat. So that's why on average, this one actually made, I think on the test, like 40 something percent. And that's because there was a day here where it moved up that much, which we can also check in the software. So if I go back one day, and then I move the calendar ahead one day and model. So I can see this is my statistical distribution model right here. And then you can see that one time it just went way over here. And when that happened, you can see if you look at the y-axis, it was it made over 200, like $270,000. So when I move my calendar one day in advance, set the software back to the original day and model one day in advance, then I can see my statistical distribution model here. And then I can see that there was, you know, a couple of days over here and just one outlier where this trade just made over $200,000. And let's compare all the other trades. So again, this one you can see when you have some loss way over here and so on and so forth. Another thing that you can visualize here is that you can actually build your trades right around the distribution model. In other words, like this UBC could be positioned a little bit to the left. And then same with this credit spread. For example, when you're modeling all your profits here, then you could structure this trade farther to the left so that you have a, a higher average return and then that would increase your probabilities. And again, you can see the way this one is structured that, you know, majority of the time it's losing, but on occasion you're just making a killing on the trade. So it's interesting because this one little or two little gains over here are huge gains, these two huge gains, then they actually outweigh all these little losses.
And then here's your condor again. You know, you could structure, you know, move some of the condor this way, like unbalance, like that other trade, and structure your trade around the statistics and increase those probabilities. So, anyway, the, you know, the main thing to think about here is you have to do the math because you don't know how many times you're going to lose. And depending on the trade structure that you're going to deploy, well, you're going to, some of them are going to experience the full loss. If you do an unbalanced spread, then you probably lose much less than you saw today. So you have to think about all those things and make sure that you're trading small enough when you do this type of strategy. The other thing that you have to consider are these commissions because a trade like this, the Iron Condor, you have all these different contracts. So you have four different strikes and it's a lot of contracts because they just expire and then you have to put the trade on the next day. See also when you trade your condors farther out in time, you don't need as many contracts and you don't have to close them out every day and restart. So by trading short term like this, you're probably paying at least 20 times more in commissions. So that's really going to significantly eat into your profits. You have to think about that. Now, if you're just doing a long call, then you have less contracts. But still, if you trade this farther out time, you're still probably saving 20 times. You'd have to do the math, but you're paying much less in commissions. So those are things that you have to consider. Well, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and gives you some more insight on trading the short-term trades and gives you some insight to ways that you can reduce risk on the downside and just to understand how much you can really lose when you're wrong and to make sure that you know you don't oversize these trades but also i think it's really interesting how that out of the money call made so much just because there was a lucky two percent move during that month and yeah if you time one of those wow you could get way ahead but the thing is we don't know the order of these trade results so you don't know how many times you're going to lose in a row before you hit a grand slam like that. Well, thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoy this and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.